The Dog and Do Show is produced by Dimar Productions in association with Studio B Productions. Welcome to Utah's longest running sports podcast. This is Dog and Deuce. Every week we take a deep dive into the Utah Jazz, the Utes, Cougars, Aggies, and everything in between. The shorthanded Jazz have lost two straight with two left to go. We'll preview the final games of the season and look ahead to the playoffs. Plus, we'll continue our play-in tournament debate, talk about Zach Wilson's off-the-field troubles, and relive Real Salt Lake's epic score. We've got all that and a whole lot more coming your way on Dog and Noose number 368. Join the conversation at dogandeuce.com or send an email to dogandeuce at gmail.com. Thank you for this episode 368 of the Dog and Deuce Show. If you want to know more, and I sure hope you do, follow along with the show notes at dogandeuce.com. Watch this show all weekend long on your television sets on KPatter TV, or if you're in uh, Southern Utah, you can watch on Backcountry TV. Or as always, you can listen wherever you get your favorite podcasts. We would love to hear from you. Send us an email to doginduce at gmail.com. I'm Dog. And I'm Deuce. You can also watch over on our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash DD on sports. Head over there. Um, we encourage everybody to comment and subscribe and like and do all those YouTube things. It'll help us out and hopefully deliver you some good content. Um, I'm, dude, I'm done. I, I'm, I'm so exhausted by... Uh, the the trying to play the guessing game of who the jazz who needs to win every night and who needs to lose for the the best matchup for the jazz like i i am bummed and a little relieved that the jazz only have two games left in the regular season because it's been a, i mean i can't imagine what it's like to be a player because it feels like as a fan just watching it's been a grind for me so I can't e- I can't even imagine an, uh, a, a truncated season like this, the emotions and the physical and mental toll it's had to take on these players. Yeah, I'm with you. I mean, last night the Jazz looked tired versus Portland. It seemed obvious, you know, especially in the second half. The first half wasn't too bad, uh, but the second half was marred with turnovers, fatigue, terrible shooting. Um and it really, there's not much positive to say about it, frankly. At this point, I'm for just resting all the starters because it's stupid. Well, I mean, I wouldn't rest the starters yet because they still want that number one seed and they can they can get it if they win the next two games. Fortunately, one of those is against Oklahoma City. And as far as I can tell, it seems like they've just kind of phoned it in. Like they're they're playing for for ping pong balls right, right now, right? And yeah, it appears so. And that's probably the smart move on their part. God, yeah, I don't know. It's just, um, it's just, it, I don't know, dude. Like, there's not much more to say. Like, the Jazz, uh, they've, they've dropped two in a row, one to, to Golden State. I, I'm going to be honest. I don't do this. I haven't done this in a while. I used to do it all the time. I turned the game off. I was tired of watching it. It was, it was frustrating me. I was getting upset. And uh, so I didn't even see the epic comeback. And the, you know, almost them, them almost putting it away. And I'm a little bummed by that, but also I don't think I could have taken that ending. I think I would have been just absolutely destroyed. So I'm kind of glad I turned it off. But uh, it is funny to see, though, if you, if you watch social media and you see the first half of the game, everyone's attitude towards Jordan Clarkson towards the end, uh, revert, uh, excuse me, uh, versus towards the end of the game with Jordan Clarkson, the shift in people's attitudes toward it, towards him. And that's, that's really who he is. That's kind of why we have him. I mean, it, it's, he's a risk, you know, like he's a gamble at times when he is uh, clicking. There's not many players that can stop him, but if he's not hitting shots, it, it really, it, it really just does deflate the entire team. So I, did you make it through the whole game or were you like me and turn it off? No, I, so I watched it on uh, tape delay. I mean, Jordan Clarkson is like he's fire and ice. If you don't know that by now, like what are you watching? 
right? right. I mean, right. That that's his MO. And I, I don't really expect that to change. I will say one thing that I am impressed about is that when he's ice from distance, he's willing to go to the rack. And in that specific thing on that last possession, I mean, to me, that seemed like a foul. Uh, you know, I think he was fouled. And Jordan Clarkson shoots a high free throw percentage, although he's missed a few of late, um, sort of unexpectedly. I think he's the best free throw shooting percentage on our team, if I remember correctly. Uh, and, and so, you know, yeah, the comeback was good. And that's, you know, like I'm just and I guess I'm going to go on a little rant here. Like I'm so sick of it. Who is the best team in the NBA right now? Utah Jazz. Is Do you believe that? Oh, oh. I, so you're not talking record. You're talking... Most complete yeah, team. Who is the best team? Fully healthy, or yeah. as the Lakers, you or the Lakers, or the Nets, or the Nets. So, I mean, and where do you think the Jazz reside? I think they are. Uh, I, I think they're probably bunched up somewhere in the two to four um, range in the entire NBA, not in the conference, but in the entire NBA, I would say two to five. Well, we'll I'll, I'll, I'll give a little wiggle room there. I'd say two to five. Like for me, I mean, I'd say the jazz are, let's see, one, two, fourth or fifth best, you know, and it depends on the day. I think the Clippers and them uh, are interchangeable, maybe based on matchups. Um, it, it would vary, you know, I, I, but here, here's the thing, man. I'm sort of sick of it. I, I think the play-in, I actually believe the play-in is causing the Utah Jazz a disservice at this point. If you think the Lakers are the best team, then we want to lose. We don't want no. the number one. No, team. no. The, the Lakers, no, we want the Lakers out of the play-in game. We want them to win because then if they win and they're out of the play-in game, then I think, and I could be wrong, there's so many different things that could happen. But from what I understand, that will could probably put them put them against the Clippers and keep them, uh, we wouldn't have to face anyone uh, that really scares us until late, late in the playoffs, like Western Conference Finals, I think. I mean, that seems unlikely. Uh, last night was the night where the Jazz had the opportunity to salvage that scenario. Yeah, the Lakers won without AD and without LeBron. I know, but the Trailblazers are the team they're chasing. And the Trailblazers beat the Jazz. So it was a double whammy, so to speak, if you will. Um, and my my point is this. Like, do you want to be the first seed? Do you not? It, are you afraid of anyone? Like this idea and this, it's sort of, I feel like it's a a sports talk slash fan created scenario. Like if the jazz are trying to duck people, the jazz aren't who we think they are. I don't think they're trying to duck anybody. I get strategy. I get giving yourself the best chance to win, to move on. But you're just talking about something that is temporary. Well, yeah, but you still, what you're saying is true about the Lakers or the Warriors. It's temporary. So what is the point of having a temporary respite from facing the team? It's just a matter of round. So you're talking about like a moral, like a, a moral victory. Oh, we got out of the first round and we lose to the Lakers in the second or the Clippers. I mean, I really don't understand it. I mean, you, a, you would rather, a, so you, you don't care if the jazz go out in the first round or the Western conference finals, you don't care because it's still a loss. Like you're not going to at all be, want to see more basketball and more jazz basketball. I mean, yeah, but I'm not afraid to play anyone. Like it, I'm not, I'm not in, in the, like, I don't like everyone. The whole talk this week is how the jazz should be afraid of the warriors. I'm not, I'm not have Mike and Donovan. I am literally not afraid. I'm not afraid of the warriors. Steph Curry, Steph Curry alone. I mean, sure. Give me Kelly Oubre. Give me Jordan Poole, a rookie out of Michigan. Yeah, let's have him. Wait a I minute. Wait a minute. Draymond and Steph. Wait a minute. Hold on. I got to stop you there because you have been about the only person up until this point who has said that you do you do fear Golden State. Like you you said that at the beginning of this year and beginning of last year. Like and even when we've been like in the past when we've been talking about playoff matchups 
and the, the possibility of drawing. You've been like, don't sleep on the Warriors. So what has changed? What's changed? I saw the Jazz without Mike Connolly freaking lose by one point on the road. Yeah, but that's one game. And Steph Curry had to have like 15 threes to beat us. Yeah, but did, I don't believe he's going to do that four out of seven with Mike Connolly and Donovan Mitchell. Did you see the, the game a couple months ago or a month or so ago when they For sure. when the Jazz got sure. blown and that's out? One off. One off. But man. so was this. This I is a one off. He's going to do that four out of seven times. This is a one off and they lost. So this is a, I don't I don't think he could continue at that pace. He's Steph Curry the Jazz and, defense. That's what 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 we're not. I mean, essentially, what I feel like people are not accounting for is allowing Quinn Snyder, Alex Jensen, and the coaching staff to game plan a scenario. That's fine. It it it's even more so in the past where you know you would let how the Warriors beat you is Steph and Clay. And then KD were so on fire, but it was the little 12 points from Looney or Draymond Green having eight assists to other people. I used to maintain that I thought Draymond Green was the most important player on that team. Everyone yeah. laughed at me, you included. I still believe that to this day. More, what more does, important than Steph Curry. What? More important yeah, than Steph Curry. I do. I mean, just want to point out, dude. I want to point out here that despite this amazing tear okay that Steph Curry's been on the <clears throat> Warriors are seven and three in the last 10 games which is really good they've won four in a row against some limited competition but they were three and three in the first six of this 10 game thing with Steph Curry playing phenomenally so let's not act like Steph Curry going for 45 means the Warriors win he has to do that to make them competitive. But he's Steph not Curry. Not to make them elite, this, to make them competitive. We're not talking about, uh, geez, I, I don't know. We're not talking about um, Patrick Beverly here. We're talking about Steph Curry, a guy who can do that. And lots of great coaches have tried to game plan for him and failed miserably because he is Steph freaking Curry. And the season he's having, if they had five more wins, he's MVP. He is playing out of his mind. I don't, I mean, look, I'm not saying uh, I, I fear the Warriors. I, I don't necessarily fear them because I do think a, a fully healthy Jazz could take them out in seven games, but I am not at all like confident. Like it wouldn't shock me if the Warriors surprise the Jazz. Um, wow. It would be a complete shock to me. Five at most. They beat the Suns. Who had the most points in that game? Uh, I don't know. Andrew Wiggins. With 38. That's how the Warriors beat you. Stefan, every time you game plan against every, any team, right? You have superstars, you have averages. There's a margin, whatever it may be. Well, if it's Donovan, maybe, you know, he's, he's bound to get 21 at the worst. And if not, it's a really bad night and you chalk it up for a loss. The Warriors have always, especially without KD, beat you by the other players. Have we forgotten Andre Iguodala? Have we forgotten Livingston? Those were the guys who made it possible, honestly, because of Steph Curry's success, for them to be uber successful. I don't see that roster having those players where, where I fear them in a seven-game matchup. Honestly, I, I just don't. I mean, Andrew Wiggins, would you say you are – he has achieved what you thought he would coming out of Kansas? No. Me neither. I mean, Draymond Green had a triple-double. Looney had three. Bazemore had 17. Steph Curry had 21. I mean, I think it's more a condemnation of the Suns than it is, you know, <laughs> than it is the Warriors, that loss, personally. Uh, but I really don't fear the Warriors. Uh, very little enters into my mind. Like, I hear what you're saying, and I was on that. Uh, train earlier, but as I've more identified it, the pieces surrounding him, it takes Steph's or, I mean, yeah, you shut down. I mean, just imagine if Andrew Wiggins only has 30 points, <laughs> the, the Suns win by two. That's not Andrew Wiggins ain't going to pop 38 very often. True. Um, so one game switched your, your opinion on them, huh? No, but the more and more I think about it, that's fine. That I, the more and more I think about, I mean, I'm not denying Steph's been playing at a torrid pace. 
and it's impressive and it's MVP esque. Although I don't personally, I don't believe he should be in the MVP conversation because they're 37 and 33. Right. And I'm not even sure five more wins. Maybe he would enter in like maybe, but um, it's just come down to the fact that uh, let Steph get his stop everyone else. I'm fine with that. Okay. Like, and, and what, what are the warriors? If Steph, like, I don't know. It just seems like this sudden fear, which I, I, as you pointed out, I was a little nervous about early on in the season has become clear to me that given a seven game series and a game plan and sure, Steve Kerr is going to game plan somewhat, although they don't really game plan much for Steph Curry. It's pretty obvious what they're doing with him every time down the floor. There's not a whole lot of crazy sets they're running. Right. 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 I mean, and if the jazz get a rebound, in that game. Well, that's we the, win. that that is honestly that is an issue for the Jazz. It has been all season rebounding. That's been an, and we'll talk about what happened uh last night against Portland. But uh this does kind of segue into uh so Nate the Hemroid, good friend of the show. If you're new here, he's a great friend of the show. He's a regular caller, regular emailer. Um he won our first our first annual March Madness bracket tournament and I did deliver him the trophy. So he has got the trophy, and as soon as I get my second shot, I'll get this, our wall of fame in, that's right here in back of me. I'll get that engraved with his name, and then we can move on to next season officially and not have to ever uh, mention his name with greatness ever again. But he did. Usually he, he'll he call in and he'll leave a, a voicemail on our voicemail and text line, which is 801-47-SPORT if you are interested and so inclined to do so. But this week he decided to drive me absolutely insane because that's his favorite pastime. And he wrote us an email and he did it. He texted both of us and said he did it because he knows how much I hate reading on the show because I'm so bad at it. So <clears throat> here, it, and it's a long one too. I do appreciate him though. He used a big font. So at least, at least he, he was that he was considerate in that aspect, but I'm a little pissed off at him that he wrote such a freaking novel length email to us. I'm going to try and get through it all. So let's, uh, it, but he is he's taking sides again man he's taking sides which is something he does he's he does best he's pitting us against each other which i don't appreciate but he says and if you want to email us you can dogandduce at gmail.com we will read your email on the show as well he says i love hearing mr dog read my words so that's why i didn't call god damn it so here's my take the wild card helped baseball the wild card helped football the wild the wild card helped hockey the wild card even helped RSL win Utah's only professional championship in soccer. Why can't the quote unquote wild card help basketball? So this goes back to uh, last week when you and I were debating the play-in tournament. And you uh, are about the only fan out there who doesn't like it. Um, and the rest of the fans love it because it, it makes uh, late season basketball that much more meaningful. Um, and Sure didn't last night versus Portland. Well, it, it, but it does against all the other teams who are fighting for the spot. So I, I'm, we're not talking about one team. And we can rehash that if you want. We can go through our same arguments if you want. Or people can go back and listen to last week's episode. Um, he says, you're so wrong, Deuce. And in case you're new here, Deuce is James. That's, that's my co-host who's very wrong on this. Um, let's see here. Like, like Doc said, this play-in thingy will go down as a success. Remember D wheels rookie season. We had one of the worst records in the first half of the season, but then had the best record after the all-star break and barely missed the playoffs. You just never know if a team blossoms or fizzles late play in teams have won super bowls, Lord Stanley's cup, the MLS cup and the world series. Why can't it happen in the NBA? Time will tell. So let's take a break there and then we'll continue on his email in a second. What do you think about that? Cause that's a very, cause your, your whole argument and, and correct me if I'm wrong. I don't want to, to, to misquote you. Or misstate your argument. From what I understood, your argument was, well, some fans are going to get, they're going to get the short end of the stick on this thing. And so I, that's why I don't like the play-in tournament. Is Say that, that right? again? Because some fan bases are going to get the short end of the stick, meaning that uh, if you're an eight seed, it's it's not fair that you're going to have to suddenly have to be playing in a play-in tournament rather than just making the playoffs. So you were upset that that certain fan bases are going to get the short end of the stick and not just automatically be in the playoffs. 
I mean, was the NBA playoffs broken? Did they lack? Did they lack? I mean, I would respond with a question to you. Did they lack? But wait, hold on. Wait, is it, uh, that's did they lack? Hold on. Did they lack? Did they lack? I mean, what did it lack? You just because because I I'm not of the belief that necessarily. I mean, this isn't civil rights. In civil rights, more is better. This is basketball, right? Like, I don't consider it progressive just because you allow more teams in personally. Like, if we're talking about human rights, yes, more is better. But just because more teams are let in, it's not necessarily but better. You didn't answer and the I, question. I though. never thought the NBA was playoffs was were broken. Last year, I was in favor of it because of the obvious stop, right? And and the unique situation that the bubble and the pandemic presented. So it made sense to me that a team who uh, was on the outside in the nine or 10 spot, but it had just had a huge break like the Grizzlies who were playing well going in and then the season stopped or the, or, or the Suns, I mean, they made a push and didn't make it that they would be afforded the opportunity because the schedule was reduced to what was it? 10 games that they played going in. It made sense to me in that capacity. Whereas now you've had a consistent season with no major stoppage. It, I, I believe you have to value game one, the same as you value game 82. Well, they, it does. It absolutely allowing does. The play in, allowing the play in games, as Nate pointed out, if you suck at the beginning of the year and get hot, I mean, you got to make up the ground. We shouldn't be like, Oh, you're hot now. Come on in. I, I just, it, to me, the concept I didn't believe the NBA playoffs were bro- were broken, and I really you, don't see the benefit. So you, unless you're a nine, basically, or 10 seed. what you're saying is you just don't believe in innovation, because if something is something is good enough, and it's not and it's not broken, then why why even try anything new? Because there's no point. How can you assure that it makes it better? You you, you can't. That's the whole point of innovation. Okay. So that, innovation. Hold on. Hold on. Let, me, let me talk. Let me talk. Something hold on. Better. Hold on. Is not is not innovation every single innovation that's ever been made has been a gamble a lot of things have failed but you will never know if something works or not unless you try it but you're like this argument is oh we're just gonna it's fine it's who cares it's fine every other um every other major sport has some sort of wild card and now that the nba is trying it you're like Nah, we don't need to do it. It might be great. It might be amazing. You never know. And it might. And honestly, you're about the only person I've seen who is griping about it. Everyone else seems to be like, this is great because late season basketball means more for more teams. And so more people. Oh, James is getting pissed. I could see on the camera. Uh, <laughs> so more people are are enjoying it. And the the I don't I don't agree with the argument like. Well, like even let's like the the baseball thing with the all star game, like one of the complaints about all star games is that they don't mean anything. So baseball, they had an idea where, okay, the winner of the all star game, that uh, that that conference or whatever it's called in baseball, that league will get home court advantage in the World Series. That's a dumb idea, but they tried it and they wouldn't have known it sucked unless they tried it. So to me. It, it, it's fun. You gamble and you lose sometimes. That's part of progress. That's part of innovation. If you don't take gambles, you you will never know if something works or doesn't work. So I don't, I don't, the, the I, I don't, hold on. Like, let me point out the difference in the MLB wild card is they're not at the bottom. The bottom. Right? Like they're not the seven, eight, nine, and 10 seeds, for example. Like you're taking the, the, two best teams who didn't win their division. So you're not taking the nine and tens okay. Okay. who wouldn't, you know what I mean? Like you're, I get it. Like we're talking about the low, we're trying to make the low, what they're essentially trying to do here in my estimation is make the first round more difficult for the one. So seed. that's the only, yeah. Which makes it more competitive and more exciting. So, but that's the only way you would ever be okay with it is if they change it. Maybe this is a rough draft. Maybe it gets, Tweaked and changed. Like you can't take, you can't get to a a a a better place unless you take that first step. Like this idea that, well, it's it's fine, it's not broken. So why are we gonna like why change anything? Like th- you because don't get I don't I, mean, I don't I don't like I, your, that. Your assumption is that I necessarily agree with the baseball wild card. Like it's fine, it doesn't bug me. But I mean, 
I don't believe. So why have a game. wild card at all? Why do you? I at don't all? believe one game. Well, there. I mean, it's a lot different too. Like, how many teams are there in the NBA, Alan? 30, 30? So more than fifty percent of the teams make the playoffs. You have to be one of the least best teams. You're rewarding below average. This is You're coming. rewarding below average. You're giving below average a chance to compete in what is supposed to be a prize. Getting to the playoffs is supposed to be an accomplishment. If you're allowing teams who are below average, because 16 teams are already in, to have an opportunity, it, to me, you're devaluing not only the season, but the idea of the playoffs as a whole. In baseball, that, that's, there, no. there are far fewer teams who make the playoffs, which I think is terrible, and that's why that's one of baseball's problems. And that's why so they boring. did a one game play in and a wild card. Exactly. So they added exactly. Thank you. Thank you. Right. But Alan, I, I there used to be four teams James, from each James division. How do you? Made it in I, I just don't understand. Four, eight. I mean, come on, it's different. I, I just do not understand how anyone who's a basketball fan can be like. I don't want more competitive basketball. I want boring. I want a boring end of the season. I, I don't. I don't enjoy having more competitive, fun basketball to watch. That to me, I don't get it. I, I don't. To I mean, me, you're the one who turned off the TV in the Golden State Warriors. Game. Yeah. Why? Guess why? So, I don't know. Guess what why? Because it was boring. Like, because it, it was, was not. Hold on. That intriguing. Exactly. You, really you just proved my point. Seven and eight. Dude, you, nine you just you turned it off. You just proved my point. It was boring. Oh, you turned it off. Listen, you turned it if off. If you stop talking, you can hear me because it was boring. It wasn't competitive. I didn't expect it to get competitive, but it was boring. That's exactly my point. If it, I so didn't, it's working. The game wasn't competitive and it was boring, but the play ins working. Do you, I mean, come on. Wait, James, you, you, you know, you know that there are more teams in the Utah Jazz in the league, right? You know that there are more teams who are who are playing for the play in tournament and playing for playoff positioning, right? It's not just about jazz and jazz fans. Like, you know that they're... Wait, wait, hold on. Hold on. So now you're going to tell me that the Grizzlies and the Spurs are going to beat the Lakers and or the Warriors? What? I mean, no. Like, What are you year, talking like, about? It's really literally about the Lakers and the Warriors. Like, if you tell me in a one... And if you tell me... What? It, the, it's about the seven and eight seed. Like, if you're telling me that you think that the playoffs will be better if by some miracle... Tell me this. Are the playoffs going to be better... Right, because the seven. So say the Warriors beat the Lakers. Whoever wins the seven eight matchup moves automatically into the seven seed. Then whoever wins, right, of the nine and ten, whoever wins with the Grizzlies and the Spurs as currently construed will play the loser of the seven and eight seed. Mm -hmm. So, what's that? Yeah. So you're telling me that whoever, regardless of who wins out of the Lakers or the Warriors, that you're telling me the playoffs will be better. It will be very innovative if the Grizzlies or the Spurs replace the Lakers or the Warriors in the playoffs. That's going to be better for the game. No, you're you are missing and the Spurs. Got you are missing the entire the point without are, anyone. How is that dude, better for the you game? You are missing the entire point. The no, point I'm not. The, it's going to be this way. You every are. Time. Let me explain it to you why you are missing the entire point. OK, and don't interrupt me. Just just hear me out. It's not just about the playoffs. It's about the fact that we're getting more competitive basketball before the playoffs. It's about the, the, the end of the regular season being more competitive for more teams. More people are going to be watching games when more is at stake rather than just the doldrums. The last like five to ten games are so boring because we got everything figured out. Like, and it's not just about the Western Conference. There's an Eastern Conference, too. Like, the Washington Wizards, your boy Russell Westbrook, him getting a chance to get into the playoffs, that's a good story. You should love that. Uh, the Boston Celtics, I mean, they're, you know, the fact that they're even fighting for their lives, that's a good story. Like, they're, it's not just about the Lakers or the Jazz fans. This is about so much more. And you're, you're not seeing the big picture and I, no, you're not. It's pres I respectfully disagree. It this well, no, is you're only focusing scenario. on the playoffs. What you have today is the perfect scenario of why it's not good. Because clearly, dude, whether you want to admit it or not, the best scenario and the most competitive situation for this year's playoffs and any year where this scenario is presented is a condemnation, in my opinion, of the play in series. Like the playoffs will not be better if the Warriors. It's, and or the Lakers are not the in point. it, in my estimation. It's not about the, the playoffs. playoffs. will not be better, frankly, 
if the Pacers, it's not about the playoffs. Or the Washington Wizards are in. This it. is my point. You, they won't be. You're missing like, the point. You you're not me. even listening. The other, you're the one who's. I feel like you're the one who's hoping, as a Jazz fan, that somehow the Lakers or the Warriors get out and the Jazz maintain the one seed and face the Grizzlies or the Spurs. Well, of course, I would like that, but a regular NBA fan doesn't like that. But you're you're missing the so point. The plan is a, hold on, a stop, thing. and then we got to move on because we've eaten up half the show here, but. You keep saying the playoffs won't be better. It's not just about the playoffs. Like you're, it you're, always is. That's what it's all about. That's no. why you play the regular season. That is why you play the regular season, man. And now two what? other teams will have a chance to make it into the postseason that wouldn't have had it before. To me, this is like you can't just stand back and say everything's fine. We don't need to innovate at all just because I don't think I'm going to like it. You know, to me, that's we would. I mean, I could go on and on about things we would not have in this world if innovation was stifled by that attitude. You're so. talking about innovate, like, dude, don't construe sports innovation for a freaking something that changes the world. No NBA playoff game changes. I the never world. said I would. All right, we got to move on. That's kind of what you're saying. That's not at all what I'm saying. Uh, uh, okay. Well, I'm going with Mr. Dog again. Totally agree that Spida might be the greater issue. Uh, Borg and Jordan have been playing great as of late. Conley can't fit back in. Uh, Conley can fit back in easily due to his shot selection versus Donovan. But is the success of Borg and Jordan because of the competition or that they found their rhythm again? I guess we will find out when the playoffs start. And this goes back to our discussion about um, about which player, Donovan or, or Mike Conley, is going to have a harder time uh, not fitting back in, but which, which which player returning to the lineup could potentially mess up the chemistry and which which player would would benefit from more time on the court to kind of get his feet under him. Um, and I, I don't think we were totally, you know, disagreeing on this one, but uh, you, you thought it was Conley needs some some time to fit back in. And I and I think just because of the way he plays that Donovan needs some time to fit back in with the group because he does take so much more so many more shots away from Borg, from Jordan. So to me, that could create a chemistry issue because I don't know about you, but I'm a little worried when Donovan comes back. But Borg's been playing outstanding other than the, again, in the Portland game. What happens when when Donovan comes back and Borg doesn't have as many opportunities, doesn't have as many looks, and we're not leaning on him as much. I'm a little worried about that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, clearly... He uh, seems to flourish in a role where, you know, um, he's set out as sort of the main scorer, right? I mean, that's what he's been in. Uh, at least in, in a jazz uniform, he seems to flourish like that. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it, obviously, I think he'll, there will be an adjustment period. And at times this year, I mean, Borg, whether you like it or not, is extremely streaky. You know, he'll have five to 10 game, 10 game runs where he looks great, even when Donovan and Mike are playing. And then he'll have like a five game run where he doesn't, Um, you know, it all averages out at the end. But yeah, I I would think that he will be the one uh, to uh, have to adjust most. And I, you know, obviously it's too late in the year for this sort of thing, but I, I almost wonder, and it's been so long since Donovan's been on the floor over a month, almost. I almost wonder, and obviously this wouldn't work, but I almost wonder if, if, and they would never do it because of what they paid him, but in times and based on matchup, if Borg wouldn't be better coming off the bench with Joe Ingles in a scenario, obviously that's never going to happen, but um, a person who's more willing to share the ball, so to speak at times is Joe Ingles, uh, especially when he brings it up the floor than Donovan sometimes. So interesting dynamic. Yeah. Borg will definitely have an adjustment period. We'll have to see how he does. Let's hope they don't play the Grizzlies. And I oh. edited his email, uh, his email here to include the nickname Borg. And I want to, I want to, I do want to thank everybody who has embraced that nickname because it came from Jess and I think it fits so well. So thank you. Let's, let's keep that going, man. I want, I want it to end up on a broadcast. I want to hear, Bowler Jack, instead of saying bogey, I want to hear him say Borg because it's just freaking perfect. Um, does Joe Ingles look right to you? Not just in his shot, but just he doesn't. I don't know, man. He looks wrecked. I don't know. I can't comment on that. Last time I said Joe Ingles, I got told I don't believe in innovation and don't read <laughs> stats. So, I mean, you Dude. can you can expound upon that. Well, Joe, well, first of all, I mean, he just he looks 
his face just looks drained. I don't know if he's got more family issues going on or what's going on, but he he does not, to me, something looks wrong. It, it looks off. And maybe I'm just reading too much into the Jazz losses, but it, something doesn't feel right with him. And so I think we should keep an eye on that. Maybe maybe things will go back to normal once he gets back uh, coming off the bench. We'll see. All right, let's move on. He says, uh, which, by the way, let's play the game. Would you rather? We kind of touched on this a little bit. Would you rather play the Lakers or Warriors? I'm of the opinion that the Suns are better suited to dethrone the, the king and the king and the king and Lakers than the Jazz. Call it an annoying gut feeling. And even though Curry scares the hell out of me, I would rather take my chances against him. That's why the Jazz need to keep the first seed no matter what. Anyway, I'm happy the playoffs are here and I get to watch this time. Let's hope for something special. And if you were not with us last year, Nate was boycotting sports because he didn't think they should be playing uh, in the time of COVID. So he actually gets to watch the playoffs this time. Um, I, I think you and I both are of the opinion that we'd rather play the Warriors than the, than the Lakers. For sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, for sure. I mean, there's no doubt. Cor- Curry does scare me, though. I think he scares me more. And I'm like I said, I'm a little surprised just because you've been kind of a, a, a big, you've been championing the Warriors cause for, for a while now. And so I'm a little, I'm a little, I'm a little surprised to hear you say that, but it does make sense. I mean, the Jazz of full strength, I think will definitely take out the Warriors in a five, in a seven game series. I just, I think it'll be a little bit closer than you do. I think. I oh, mean, five games, Max. <laughs> Max, I'm I'm serious. Or the Jazz aren't what we hope they are. That's that's. A good I mean, point. he doesn't have the. I mean, it, you have like this is my point. Like, you either have to really level yourself on who we the the Jazz think they are at full strength, or acknowledge. I mean, you have to acknowledge that they're not as good as their record indicates, or acknowledge that they should beat the Warriors. There just aren't pieces there as there were previously, uh, who who will do the right things consistently to make me fear them. Do you, uh, that does bring up a good question and do this real fast. Do you think the jazz are as good as their record is? At full strength. And uh, uh, the real, and I, and I think I mentioned this previously, I mean, for the jazz to have the philosophy that they have, they can't be turning the ball over. I know we've hit on turnovers and offensive rebounds, But essentially what the Jazz have turned into is a volume three-point shooting team and dunks. And the idea behind volume is you have to get as many as humanly possible. Whether they're good looks or not, statistics show you, which I disagree with, although statistics are hard to argue with, that you have to shoot a certain number to make that shot have the value that the statisticians say it does uh, and a certain percentage. And so, I mean... I don't know. Are they good enough? We'll see if they can do it, but I know they can't turn the the ball over uh, as much as they have lately. And uh, also they need to rebound. Yeah. Turnovers. They, they, I mean, they're the drive fans crazy. And I understand because it drives me crazy too. I'm okay with some turnovers. As long as you're making your shots. The, the problem is the team just goes ice cold all at the same time. And it's so frustrating. And then when they do get looks, they're, they're turning the ball over. Like Borg last night, dude, every time he touched the ball, I just assumed it was going to be a turnover in the second half. It was so bad. And he looked, it just, it was not right. They definitely scouted how to play him. And and you can bet your ass teams are going to be doing that the rest of the way. And in the playoffs, they're going to be poking that ball out every time he touches it. I think he, he's got to be decisive and he's got to, he's got to immediately make his move. Or he's got to immediately pass it or he's immediately got to shoot it. He cannot sit there and dribble down on the post because it doesn't, it just doesn't work. I mean, they're going to be knocking that ball loose every second. Um, And then his last paragraph, maybe this will make you feel a little bit better. And I'll agree with Mr. Deuce on one thing. Justin Fields will be the steal of the draft and he will prove it come his rookie season as he leads the Bears to the playoffs and the only rookie quarterback to do so next season. I'm not a Bears fan, but I freaking loved the pick. Love your hemorrhoid. Thank you, hemorrhoid, for your email. Our email address is doginduce at gmail.com. Hit us up. Uh, and if you'd rather leave a voicemail or a text, you can text us as well. It's 801 477 7678 to make it a little bit easier. It's 801 47 Sport. Um, so, yeah, there you go. Justin Fields taking the Bears to the, to the playoffs. What do you think? I mean, he's right on the last two things. Don't fear the Warriors, and Justin Fields was a great pick. I mean, 
here's the thing where another point I'd like to make or why I don't fear the Warriors, right? When we have a starting lineup, we have three shooters, three point shooters on the floor, right? Whoever is guarding Steph Curry, here's what we're going to do every time down. Put him in a pick and roll. Have him run into Derek Favors and Rudy Gobert and see if he can overcome that constantly. I mean constantly right. and still be as offensively productive. I just – look, he'll be good. He'll be good. He's Steph Curry. I'm not saying he's going to have four points, all right? I'm saying he's going to have 25, and I don't fear 25. over. I fear 45, but I don't think that's realistic against the Jazz. So, yeah, I agree with his last two points, and – Time will tell who turns out to be right about the play in. Uh, you love it this year. You'll hate it next year. And I'll be glad to listen to that when you don't like it. Uh, so, and we'll, we'll, we'll rewind this clip and play it back for you. We definitely will. Uh, so yeah, you're essentially, you're saying, um, let Steph kind of get, not let him get his, but he's going to get his, let's worry about everyone else for the most part. Is that kind of, sure. yeah. Okay, gotcha. And make him play hardcore defense. Right. And this could be a moot point because we might not even be playing them, but we'll see. Um, but r- r- let's do this really fast because we're, we're running super short on time. Uh, I want to talk about the the Portland game a little bit because that was just a, a debacle. And the Jazz get off to these hot starts now, which is contrary to what they were doing earlier on in the season where they were having terrible first quarters. Uh, but now they get off. They have a, a hot first quarter. And I'm not I'm not confident at all that they're going to finish it out. And it just, they get lazy, uh, lazy. I mean, that's really it. I mean, th- no rebounding whatsoever. I mean, that's a, a problem again, uh, missing shots. And I understand that happens, but these turn these lazy, terrible turnovers are just brutal. So what were your takeaways from the Portland game? I mean, look, Dame and CJ did their thing. The third and fourth quarter were garbage turnovers, look discombobulated, look disinterested. That's, I mean, yep. didn't want to be there. Good thing they're not in the play play in bracket because it would have been a sad day. But uh, let me ask you this real quick. Sorry to move back. I got to go back to the play on thing. How offended are you going to be when the Warriors and the Lakers don't play their starters in the playoff game, saying they want to they want to be the eight seed and play the Jazz and then get knocked out? Like I'm going to be interested to see. Your assumption that it makes it more competitive, I think, is it'll be interesting to see. I wouldn't be surprised if it st- as currently stands. I mean, do you anticipate it's in it going to be anything different than it currently stands? Uh, like, do you, you think? Are you picking the Grizzlies to beat the war? That, that's my point. No, I don't know what it changes other than. No, I think it'll be Lakers. The last five see. games mattering. I think it'll be. Like, I, I don't know if that's worth it to me. Uh, as, as far as from an NBA perspective as well, Steph Curry gets hurt in the play in game. Wow. Worth it. Nope. We lost him. Yeah. But I, I mean, mean, it's basketball. The man. risk like, is there. I don't know that the reward injuries is. happen all the time. Like that's just, that's part of sports, Like, but you you're making him play two extra games where he wouldn't have. And he would have been He's in also the playing series. 10 X, 10 less games than he would have in a normal se- season too. So, uh, so a net of, of eight, I guess, uh, less, but games. you want it to be forever. Man, yeah, you want I like the it. play in I to do. be forever. So that's I like, like it. A, 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 I mean, I mean, I may not like this the circumstances of a, a single year's play in tournament, you know, I, the ramifications of that. But that doesn't mean I don't like the whole thing as a and I think that's that's what your problem is, is I, or where where we disagree is I think you're looking at this year. And I don't think you should be looking at this year. I think you should be looking in general. This makes more competitive basketball later on in the season when we wouldn't get that. And that's really all it boils down to for me. So we got to move on. But there. I don't know that this scenario is really going to be any different in the West. It, it has been, though. That's, that's this, is the, this is what you're not seeing. It has been more competitive basketball the last week or so than it would have normally been. I mean, it's already been proven that that, that aspect of it works. In any- what do you mean? LeBron and AD aren't playing. Donovan Mitchell. There are and more Mike teams. Connelly there are more playing. teams than the Lakers and the Jazz. James, like it's it's meant more to the Grizzlies. It's meant more to the Spurs. Even the Kings have an outside chance of getting in there. Like it, it's more competitive basketball than we would have got. It's not just about the Lakers and the Jazz. And this is. I, I'm not sure how you quantify that. I let's mean, let's move the on. Spurs are I just explained it to you. I just explained it to you. The Spurs. This. 
the the Kings have an outside chance of getting in there. The Spurs are fighting for their lives. The Grizzlies are, are jockeying for position. Like it, it makes it way. In and this what is just world. Is it better? This is like, just in the West. I can only take the scenario in front of me. I you're just assuming ex- that it will. You're, I just you're assuming explained that- why it's better because it's more competitive basketball towards the end of the season. How do you not get it? It's so simple. I don't. I disagree. The Spurs are three and seven. Yeah. But Over they're the still fighting. Time, that's more but their games, their games mean something. How do you not get this? The games actually mean something. This is like this is the this games is always mean something. I don't know what you mean. Well, not they according to you. Something. According to you, they don't mean anything anymore. So I don't know, man. Let's we got to move on though, dude. We're 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 out of time. So I I want to talk about this. Zach Wilson. It, James is still stewing over this. He's still pissed. I mean, I don't think what you're saying really makes sense. It is, you know, you are the only. You are literally no. You're definitively, right. you're you're about the only person who who views it this way. Who's not like a, a member of I don't know, like the Kings fan base or something, or I don't know. Um, Why would the Kings be against? I, I don't know, dude. It's just one of the teams in there. You, you're the only person I've seen who's like, this is awful. Everyone else is like, this is great, dude. These games mean something, and teams are playing hard late in the season. Like, you're the only person I've seen who's, who's upset about this. Um, anyway, Zach Wilson. So, did you see that video of, on draft night uh, when he was standing with the other first rounders? And they're all getting their photos taken. And he looked. Nah, I did not. They were, I mean, they were, they were black players all around him, and he looked terrified, like terrified. And if you're watching on the YouTube channel or on TV, uh, I'm playing the video right now over this. He looked petrified. It, it was one of the, the funnier and sadder things I've ever seen in my life. Um, and now his mom is making things much more difficult for him because she just recently went on a rant about how Disney World are, their mask holes is what he that she called in because they're enforcing the mask man or they were enforcing masks and they're pretty, pretty adamant about it. And she, she also called Snapchat uh, a platform for whores. Um, and I, apparently I haven't heard this one, but apparently there's a headline floating out there that says that she claims that just because she voted for Donald Trump and doesn't believe in black lives matter uh, or disagrees with black lives matter, that she's not a racist. So, um, Here's the thing. Zach Wilson grew up in Draper. Okay. He's a, a affluent, white, good Mormon kid from Draper, Utah. And then he went to play ball in Provo, Utah. Not exactly the most, not exactly the, the diversity capital of the United States of America. And just like that, he is now thrust into the biggest stage in the world in New York. A lot more diverse. A lot more... uh, His worldview is about to be expanded quite a bit, I think. And the last thing he needs is his mom spouting stuff like this. Because she thought Ute fans were bad. She thought us Utah fans were were bad. So bad that she, she shut off her Twitter account. But now she's in freaking New York, dude. She's about to get blindsided by what New York is really like. I mean, if you think Utah's bad and the market here is bad, you have no idea what's coming for you in New York. I don't, have you seen any, any of these stories or any of the things that she's been saying? Yeah, I've seen some of the Instagram or Twitter posts. I didn't see the picture you discussed earlier. I mean, this is sort of a time-honored tradition, you know, of a, of a, a player – a draftee or a superstar's entourage, you know, creating trouble for them where there doesn't need to be any. Uh, apparently, if you're from Draper, Utah, you're no exception to that. Um, and, you know, like uh, what she says is what she says. We live in America. She's I may disagree with her opinion. She can have it, whatever. Uh, really, where I would hit home is. And if I was her son and her husband, I would try to have the conversation that's this. We've done everything in our life to make sure Zach, Zach's dreams have been achievable. Let's not try to put ourselves front and center and hurt the possibility of those dreams being successful. You're right. They're going to New York. I mean, they're a boatload of, I mean, there's the New York Post. 
keep talking, Lisa Wilson. You'll find out what it's like to be on the front page of the post with a salacious headline and other terrible words. Although I don't really like that publication. They do it. Um, and they've already so started. Really, it's a detriment. And it's not really giving the, the part that bugs me, although I may disagree with all the mask and the Trump and black. I do disagree with all the Black Lives Matters Trump. She says really what it is, is like it's a disservice to her son. It's a selfish maneuver. This is his moment to shine. How about you sign off and let Zach be Zach for a minute? Forget all the political and mass stuff. Yeah, that's all dumb. But like, man, if I was Zach Wilson, I'd be like, all right, mom, I didn't say much when you were in college because dad went to the U and it was rivalry smack, whatever. But dude, I'm in the NFL now and I'm trying to make a career and I'm trying to be a good quarterback bordering on great hopefully should the play chips fall in pace and you're doing everything you can to take my focus away from that because i have to answer a question about some dumb thing you said it's selfish it I mean, is there's no other way it is. to say it i and, and people could disagree with me and and think i'm being harsh on her i'm a parent and i can tell you right now if my kid was ever drafted i would only i wouldn't i would be hesitant to even go on the floor with them because it's Agreed. not about me. Agreed. I mean, I would be there for support if you were like Aaron Rodgers and dropped. I don't want you to be stuck in the green room like he was. So, you know, that's a balancing act, but she's taking away from, from Zach. And I mean, what a weird world where I'm defending Zach Wilson from his mom. <laughs> right. But th this is where she's sort of forced me to be. It, and as a parent, I, I do everything I can to not take away from my children's successes. She clearly is. And it's selfish and it's it's below a person who's yeah. above 35, which I think she is. It it um it almost it feels a little like Lamar Ball, where he she just cannot help herself. You know, she she made her Instagram private finally, but I'm sure there's no way that's gonna last. It just it feel and I don't know her, I'm not trying to be smirch her, but just the way she's acted. And her her attitude and her behavior lead me to believe that she's a type of person who claim who who craves the limelight, who needs to have attention on her. And so we'll see what happens. But I I agree with you. It almost feels like, and again, not, this is not political, but it almost feels like a little Donald Trump esque, where it's like just can't help himself, just can't help say what what he what's on his mind, despite how many people are just begging him to shut up. You know, like how many people in in his uh, administration and in, in the GOP were just at begging for him to, to stop talking. She it feels a little like that. She just cannot help herself. And uh, it, it is it, it does bother me, though, when when you have someone who was raised uh, and, and there's nothing wrong with being, you know, raised in Draper, Utah. There's nothing wrong with going to BYU. But what I do have a problem with is when they think that they have the whole world figured out. And they don't understand that I have been very lucky to live in the places I have lived and play football in the places I played. And I, I've been very fortunate. But instead to take the attitude like, oh, I know everything. And I know everything that everyone else deals with and what they go through. That's when I have a problem with it. And the, 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 there was a, the point that I knew Zach Wilson was in trouble was when he was caught on video and the look on his face when he was surrounded by, by black players who were just just posing for the camera, doing nothing wrong, doing nothing, nothing nefarious whatsoever. And he looked like he was in the middle of a gang war or something. Like he looked like people were going to start shooting at any minute. Like he just looked petrified for absolutely no reason. And to me, that's when I was like, oh, dude, New York City, he better ball out. Because if he doesn't ball out, they're going to eat him alive there. He has no idea what's in the store. And his mom is not making it any easier. So I just, I thought that was something we had to talk about because it's, I don't yeah, know. I mean, man. I would even add to that. I, uh, the person that you mentioned, I think Lisa Wilson is worse than that. You mentioned a politician, politicians are politicians. We're talking about taking away from her son. Right. I mean, that's Good the point. bottom line for me. Good point. Kid. Why are you trying to make their life harder? Very good point. And, and if you aren't trying, recognize you are and then stop. Someone needs to say to her, and I assume people have, right? I mean, they had to. Have. I, yes, of course they have. I mean, someone has had to have said, whether it's her husband, Zach, his management team, whatever. Someone had to say, like, come on, ease up on the Instagram post, I would assume. If not, he needs to fire the management team. Right. Because this is your job. I mean, literally, 
the bottom line is for me, you have made his life harder every year he's played football. And you're going to New York City, his uh, to obviously one of the worst teams in the NFL because he was the number two pick. His life doesn't need to be made harder. No, it's it already going to be hard enough. It doesn't. Be quiet. Cheer him on from the sideline. Wear your number two or one jersey, whatever number he gets, and be a proud mama. That's all you do, man. So many parents do it. it. You know, like, it's not hard. It's really not hard just to shut your phone off and not make a stupid video about how mad you are at Disneyland. It's For just, sure. it's so ridiculous. Uh, two minutes left real quick. I, I want to mention, I wanted to talk more about this, but we're out of time. Uh, that amazing goal by Rubio Rubin in the, in the RSL game, they lost that match, but uh, that was unbelievable. I have never seen that type of goal live ever in my life. I've always seen highlights after. So to actually see that happen was pretty cool. I wish I was at the game to see it, but that was that was pretty cool. I don't know if you saw that and what you thought. I mean, it was sour totally because they didn't they didn't win the match, but uh, they could have used the three points. But still, that was freaking awesome, man. I mean, yeah, the old bicycle kick is like every soccer player's dream, right? They practice it. Very rarely is it attempted, and even more rarely is it successful. It's one of the best goals in RSL history, and although. Uh, you know, a win would have only made it that much better. Let's be honest. The beginning of the year through three matches, if you were an RSL fan in management, maybe not a player, but even probably a player, and you had six points through three games, you'd be pretty happy, you know? Uh, and they had uh, the, the defensive form let them down as yep. did Wando in that match, which is what Wando does against everyone, but it's specifically against RSL. I mean, he is a vulture for loose balls around the goal, you know, at yep. this age. And he has been for years, six points through three matches, hoping for a tie. Uh, it's exceptional. Let's hope it RSL is. continues on that streak. Another match this Saturday against Nashville. Jazz have two more games uh, against the Thunder and Kings. Uh, 2-0 and in those. We're 10 seconds left, 2-0 and in the, in the last two games for the Jazz. I think they'll go one and one because the plan matters, man. The Kings have an outside chance. True. So it's very important that the Kings get that game. Uh, yeah. One and one. Sweet. All right. That is going to do it for episode 368 of dog and deuce. Thank you for joining us. Uh, well, next week we are going to be talking about the playoffs. I cannot believe we're actually saying it, but we're actually going to be previewing the playoffs. It feels like it has been a long time coming. So come back for that. We're going to try and get some guests on for that uh, and, and uh, talk a little more, talk a little playoff basketball, which is something we always enjoy. Um, until then, we want to know what you think. So send us an email to doginduce at gmail.com. I am Dog. And I'm Deuce. And we will talk to you next week. See you then.